We start nine news at noon in Commerce City where a crash sent six people to the hospital. Commerce City posted on their Twitter that a driver traveling westbound on East 88th veered into oncoming traffic and then hit a minivan. That red car ended up in the creek. Four kids were ejected from that car. One of them is in critical condition. Two people in the minivan were also hurt. They were taken to the hospital as well. No other information about the extent of any of the injuries. We'll keep you updated on that. Authorities say multiple explosions and a fire at an industrial site in the Detroit suburbs sent debris flying as far as a mile away and killed one person. NBC's Adrian Brodus has more from Clinton Township. Indeed, some terrifying moments in this Michigan community. We're about 20 miles roughly outside of Detroit in Clinton Township, and this is all that's left of the facility that was known for distributing vape items and other products. Containers containing butane like this were flying through the air as well as shrapnel. The fire chief here telling us a 19-year-old male died from his injuries. What caused the fire is still unclear and what led to those explosions also under investigation. We know a firefighter was also injured, but he suffered minor injuries and is expected to recover. Right at the start of this fire, a big concern was the air quality, but a hazmat team was out overnight and earlier in the morning, and the air quality is safe, according to the fire chief. There was a lingering smell of smoke, but that has started to dissipate. We will keep an eye on this story throughout the day. Back to you. Your Brodus reporting. Thank you. United States Postal Service says two letter carriers were robbed at gunpoint in Denver's Montbello neighborhood. It happened last night around 5 o'clock. A home security camera captured the suspects taking off in a white Hyundai Sonata. USPS says the first happened nearly or, or, uh, around Bowling Drive and Duluth Court, the second on Eureka Court. Now, if you have any information, you're asked to call the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. The number's right there on your screen, 877-876-2455. Let's get a live look outside right now. Look out mountain, look at the city of Denver, and you can actually see it. That's a good sign. Another beautiful day across the metro area. Live look from the Flatirons, or look at the Flatirons there in Boulder. A little cloud cover building up. Meteorologist Chris Bianchi here with us right now. Beautiful day, but it might be a little cloudy. Yeah, I think those clouds will actually build up today, Steve. And we actually have a small chance, small chance for a light rain or snow shower. It's not a big deal. But uh, temperatures today around seasonal, but uh, averages later on this week will get some snow into the picture for us here in the Denver area. And taking a look right now at where the snow is actually falling, it's here into the high country where we've had that snow consistently for the last, what, three to four days or so for us here at some of those higher elevations. But otherwise, the story for the rest of the day today, light snow today in the mountains, that kind of gradually comes to a close. And then as we get through Denver, it stays dry through tomorrow and then our next storm. Thursday and Friday. That'll bring us some rain, maybe flipping over to snow for us Thursday night and a Friday morning. We'll have more on that in my full forecast. In the meantime, for the here and now, we're seeing some of those snow showers from the flat tops, the Elk Mountains on north into the front range. Closer look in here. Again, this snow kind of gradually coming to a close as we speak, as we head through the rest of the day today. Again, there's that snow. Still occasional light snow showers might above 10,000 feet get an additional inch or two of accumulation. Not a big deal. Again, uh, the snow is basically done for us here in the mountains. And by tonight, it really is over and done with it. Tomorrow, kind of a breather from all that mountain snow that we've had. Meantime, for us here in Denver, average high for today, 52, will be right around there with increasing clouds and a slight chance for a rain or snow shower after about, say, 3, 4 o'clock for us. But not a big deal for us here in town, as I mentioned. Highs in the 40s and 50s, eastern plains, and mostly in the 30s for us into the high country, pretty close to our seasonal averages. Meantime, it's still a little bit blustery out there, especially as you get east of Denver, uh, still seeing some of those gusts occasionally getting into that 20 to 25 mile an hour range. But later on to the week, we're going to kick up, kick up the wind out ahead of our next storm system. I'll have details on that in my full forecast. All right, Chris. New at noon, we've learned that a sprinkler system above the stage at the Buell Theater accidentally went off and flooded parts of the stage there. Hairspray and water, they don't mix, so tonight's performance of Hairspray now canceled, and the DCPA tells us they will reach out to ticket holders to let them know. This was the first night that show was set to run. It runs through March 1st, or, or, or it runs through later this month. The extent of the damage unknown right now. We reached out to the DCPA for more information, including what effect this might have on future performances of Hairspray. 
the schnazzy Super Tuesday intro. Right now, voters in 16 states, and including here in Colorado, are voting in presidential primaries across the country. Former President Donald Trump will be on primary ballots around the USA, including right here. This comes after the U.S. Supreme Court issued a unanimous decision on Monday saying that only Congress, not the states, can disqualify a candidate using the Constitution's insurrection clause. Even if Trump were to win every single state today, he would not reach the 1,215 delegates needed to win the nomination. That could happen as early as next week. Here's a map of states voting today. It is called Super Tuesday because more delegates are at stake today than any other single day during primary elections. And when the polls close, we will be tracking Super Tuesday as the results start coming in. You can follow all of the updates and more coverage on Super Tuesday on air and online at 9news.com. And just a reminder, if you haven't mailed in your ballot, it's too late to do so, but you can drop it off by 7 o'clock tonight. We have a list of locations where you can do that on 9news.com. Tonight, you can also join Lester Holt, Savannah Guthrie, and the NBC News team for live results and analysis of Super Tuesday. Coverage starts at 8 o'clock right here on 9 News. And we will start our local coverage this afternoon at 4 with Tom and Kim. Marshall Zellinger will be on next with Kyle Clark starting at 6 o'clock. Well, if you tried to get on Facebook or Instagram this morning and you couldn't, you're not alone. But good news, most if not all people are now back online. According to Meta, this was a technical issue. And according to a company statement, that issue has been resolved. Service has been restored to users. Around half a million Facebook users reported issues logging in or accessing the site this morning. Some users found that they'd been logged out of their Facebook accounts. Others got notifications on Instagram that, quote, something went wrong and their feeds couldn't load. Threads and Facebook Messenger also went down. People convicted of shoplifting in Aurora could go straight to jail under a new ordinance making its way through city council. The ordinance has already passed its first reading. It would require jail time for anyone convicted of retail theft at $100 or more. First offense would be a mandatory minimum of three days in jail. The second offense, 90 days. The third, 180 days. A business owner who's been dealing with shoplifters hopes that this passes. Well, we want our customers to feel safe when they come in. And uh, having a law that gives consequences immediately helps us do that. So and if it does this much, I'm great. If it does this much, I'm better. Aurora City Council member Allison Coombs is against this idea. She says that studies show it won't stop people from reoffending, especially if police aren't solving these crimes. Seems like we're going to be putting a lot of resources into something that is unlikely to be effective. And no amount of sentencing is going to change that. If people don't think they're going to get caught. This ordinance passed its first reading again, 7 to 3. It'll have its second reading next week at City Council.